Dashil Kim Gibson, producer-director. Three Korean-American woman producers, Elaine Kim, Chris Choi, myself, we decided to make this documentary to give voice to the voiceless victims, i.e. Korean-American shopkeepers and shop owners who lost everything during the Los Angeles upheaval. So we went with no money and borrow the equipment. The three main um, media images of Koreans during, during, uh, before, during, and immediately after the, the quote riots were one of a Korean shopkeeper shooting a black teenager in the back of the head from a store videotape. And that was the second most shown video during the one re week following April 29, 1992 on LA Commercial News, usually shown together with the beating of Rodney King. And two, uh, screaming, begging, crying, yelling, inarticulate, not speaking, but just uh, hysterical, mostly female shop owners who are uh, were begging uh, uh, people not to destroy their stores or who are lamenting over their stores having been destroyed. And three, the uh, footage shown over and over again of Korean, mostly male, merchants on the roof with guns, apparently ready to shoot, shoot anybody and uh, sort of with the implication that they only cared about their property. They didn't care about human life or the communities, uh, the, the people in the communities where, they were, uh, where their stores had been located. Saigu is different, diametrically opposite. It's focused right into the heart you know, the court of the, you know, uh, the uh, problems. And the dealing with emotional strengths and the frustrations and human uh, uh, feelings of the individuals who have suffered after the Los Angeles uprising. Jason Lee died on April 30th, 1992, a month away from his 19th birthday. He was accidentally shot by a Korean, mistaken for a looter. He was the only Korean of the 53 who died. thousand Koreans live in LA County. They suffered about half of the estimated 800 million dollars in losses. We present Korean women who are caught in the LA crisis. Their lives have been altered forever. These are their stories, some facts, some feelings. They speak only for themselves. 
I'd like to express my feeling about this after this riot. Right now, I'm angry at everybody. Or on contrary, I'm angry at myself. Because I don't know to whom, to where I should be angry at. I'm totally confused. Totally confused. 저는 이 미국이요. 전 세계적으로 어, 군인도 파견하고 구호 물자랑 모든 원조를 많이 하기 때문에 모든 게 완벽한 줄 알았는데요. 이번 폭동을 당해서 보니까 너무나 이 미국의 어느 한 구멍이 뚫려 있는 것 같아요. 개인이 우리 아들을 쏜 걸로. 하지만 조금 더 넓게 생각했으면 이거는 개인이 문제가 아니고 이건 무언가가 잘못돼 있는 거예요. She came to America for her children, for me, for Ken and Liz. They gave up absolutely everything. In Korea, my mom never worked. I mean, she had maids. My dad, he was, he was the boss. He had employees. But you know, they literally gave up everything just for us, you know? 저희는 미국에 올때 꿈은요 영화에서 본 그대로 창가에 꽃들도 좀 있고 길가에도 이제 깨끗이 정돈되고 그런 나라로 알고 왔는데요. 저희 외국 사람들은 여기 미국은요 전부 이렇게 코도 크고 얼굴도 하얗고 머리도 하얗고 이런 사람들이 사는 줄 알았는데요. 여기는 미국이 아닌 것 같아요. 무슨 멕시코 이제 어, 멕시코라 그러면은 참 이해가 될것 같고요. 백인들하고는 별로 상대한 게 없죠. 학교에서도 선생님들이 대개 어, 일본인 2세들 그리고 멕시코 2세. 저희들은 아이들이 어리기 때문에 학교 앞에 있는 마켓을 갖다 구입을 해가지고 마켓 뒤에 투베드룸 하우스까지 이렇게 겹쳐 있기 때문에 아이들이 학교에 갔다 오면은 저희들 조그만 아이들인데도 저희들을 많이 헬퍼했어요. 아이들이 학교 갔다 와가지고는 
굉장히 좋아했어요. 우선에는 어, 얘네들이 한국에 있으면 숙제 때문에 어, 굉장히 이렇게 걱정들을 많이 하곤 했는데 우선 공부하는 데 굉장히 보람을 느끼는 것 같아요. 야, 홈워크도 별로 없고 또 무거운 가방 들고 다니는 것도 없으니까 애들이 굉장히 좋아하더라고요. We started the liquor business because uh, uh, in 1980 our family immigrated here about 15 people and uh, the woman could work at the sewing company but the men they couldn't do anything there that's why we opened it to give our family job we invested the money uh, about uh, let me see 15 years of our savings and uh, the others from the bank loans I believe America was a wonderful country. It was my dreamland when I was little. While I was in junior high school, I met my late husband, and he moved from countryside to my hometown, Tegu, and we lived in neighbors, but as we grew up, you know, we, we fell in love with each other. And then we were engaged in 1965. A registered nurse, Young Sun Han went to Sweden where she invited her fiancé and was married. Mr. and Mrs. Han came to America in 1970. She worked as a nurse. He ran a liquor store. Then he became gravely ill. I didn't think one second he will go. It was just denial. He will never die. When he watched me, he couldn't tell me that he was going. Maybe he wanted to say to me the last word. But I stopped every time, so he couldn't say a word to me. So I started going to store, and then I got scared because I never did any retail business. As I touched the money, I got scared, you know. My husband always took care of my payroll check and everything. And then I started to learn about the business. And after one year, I could do pretty easily. But I had a very tough time. I cannot tell you how difficult it was.